myself, Dr. Kalyan Kumar Paul. I am a public health specialist and today I will talk about the new viral infection which has taken the world and you already know that it has affected so many countries and it has been already declared as a pandemic by WHO. It's a new threat to the world but what it is? It is a new type of virus belonging to a large family of viruses which earlier had also caused illness in animals or in the humans. And in the humans, this group of virus have known to cause respiratory infections ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And this new virus and the disease were unknown before the outbreak began in Wuhan in China in December 2019. So how does one get this infection? People can catch it from others who have the virus. And the disease can spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose or mouth which are spread when a person with disease coughs or exhales. These droplets land on the objects and surfaces around the person. And other people then get infected by touching these objects and surfaces when they touch their eyes, nose or the mouth with their hands. That is why it is very important to stay more than one meter away from a person who is sick. Now how deadly is the new virus? The new virus has a very high infectivity but low mortality. That means it has a high capacity to infect a people very quickly but the death is not so much and the mortality rate ranges between 1 to 2 percent. And this mortality is significantly less as we compare with the 2003 SARS or the 2012 Mars outbreaks. But there is a caution in it that older adults, that is those who are above 60 years and people of any age with underlying health conditions like diabetes, lung diseases, heart diseases or kidney diseases are at greater risk of the severe illness from this virus and these are the person who are more dying. So what are the symptoms of the new disease? The most common symptoms are fever, tiredness and dry cough and like other viral diseases the patient may have body ache, pains, nasal condition, runny nose, sore throat or diarrhea. Symptoms are usually mild and begin gradually and some people become infected, infected but don't develop any symptoms and don't feel unwell. And these are the people whom we cannot detect but they are spreading the disease in the community. Most people have a require from the disease and without any special treatment. Around one out of every six people become seriously ill and develop difficulty in breathing. And so the danger symptoms are the fever, cough and shortness of breath. So seek medical advice if you develop these symptoms and have and you are in close contact with such patients or if you live in or recently have been in an area with ongoing spread of this new disease. So how to protect? You can protect yourself by following these do's and don'ts. So what you should do? You should frequently wash your hands and ha wash your hands with soap and water or use alcohol based hand rubs and wash hands even if they are visibly clean because you cannot see the virus and it is advised that you wash your hands at an interval of 20 to 30 minutes. Cover your nose and mouth with handkerchief or tissues while sneezing and coughing and throw used tissues into closed bins immediately after use. And if you see a doctor if you are unwell and you can call the state or the central helpline numbers. And what you should not do? You should not speak in public. Don't touch your eyes, nose and mouth with your hands and don't come in close contact with anyone if they are, you are experiencing cough and fever. And there are some advice for the travelers who are returning to India. You should inform the airline's crew if you have fever, cough or difficulty in breathing and you can seek masks from them. Avoid close contact with family members or the fellow travelers. You follow the directions of the airline crew while disembarking and also follow the quarantine rule if you are told so. At the airport, you provide your travel itinerary and submit self-reporting form to the airport health officer. 
if we have returned from countries which have been affected by these new virus in the past 14 days and you have cough, fever or difficulty in breathing, call the helpline number immediately and follow the instructions. Now another question is whether you need to wear a mask or not. No, everybody doesn't need a mask. You, you only wear a mask if you have symptoms of cough, fever or difficulty in breathing. You are caring for a suspect or confirmed patient or you are a health worker attending to patients with respiratory symptoms. And you should be careful about wearing the mask and you should follow some basic rules and unfold the pleats of the mask. Make sure that they are facing down. Place the mask over your nose, mouth and chin and ensure there are no gaps on either side of the mask and fits properly. Avoid touching the mask while using it. Do not leave the mask hanging from the neck. And change the mask after 6 hours or as soon as it becomes wet. Never reuse disposable masks and dispose the used masks into closed bins. Do not touch the potentially contaminated outer surface of the mask while removing it. And after removal of the mask, clean your hands with soap and water or use alcohol based hand rub disinfectant. Now, does everybody need to test for this virus? No. So, whom to test? All symptomatic people who have history of international travel in the last 14 days, who had come in contact with the confirmed cases, who are healthcare workers, and hospitalized patients with severe acute respiratory illness or influenza like illness or severe pneumonia. Asymptomatic direct or high risk contacts of confirmed cases should be tested once between day 5 and day 14 of coming in his contact. And this direct and high risk contact includes those living in the same household with a confirmed case and the health work, work, workers to examine a confirmed case without adequate protection as per WHO recommendations. Now the most important thing, we have to break this transmission chain and so that we can protect ourselves and for that we need that lockdown. So ensure total lockdown but don't panic, don't rush and don't overstock because there is enough of everything every day for everyone. But we have to maintain the basic rules that is maintain at least one meter distance in marketplaces, medical stores, hospitals, etc. Have patience and keep calm while shopping for essential goods or medical supplies. Avoid frequent trips to the market to buy groceries or medical supplies. Avoid shaking hands and hugging as a matter of greeting. And most importantly, avoid non-essential social gathering either at home or at other places. And don't allow any visitor at home or visit someone else home. So, observe social distancing at all times. This will prevent you from getting the infection and also protect the community from getting the disease. And if you have any symptoms like cough, fever or difficulty in breathing, avoid any kind of exposure and immediately call the helpless numbers. Thank you. And you should subscribe to the channel. Thank you.